Today we're going to talk about the reactions that amino acids carry out. And here we have five types of reactions. The first reaction is a decarboxylation reaction. And decarboxylation means the loss of a carbon dioxide molecule. So we have the formula of amino acids like this. And what happens is this COO, this carbon dioxide, this part, is lost. And we get something like this. CH2, NH2. And it's a CH2 because this hydrogen will join this other one. So it's CH2. And the name of the amino acid changes. For example, if this is histidine, it becomes histamine and so on. So this is the first type of reaction, decarboxylation. The second type of reaction is a condensation reaction with molecules that contain a carbonyl group. A carbonyl group is a C double bond O. This is carbonyl. And this produces something called a shift base. So, for example, this is the amino acid and this is a molecule with a carbonyl group. So what happens is the H2 here in the amino group will combine with this oxygen so we will lose a water molecule and we get a new compound like this. This is the N here and this is lost. This is lost. And then we'll have the double bond C and this is the rest of the molecule which we can see here. This is called a shift base. This is clinically significant because for example hemoglobin binds glucose and when hemoglobin binds glucose it forms a compound which has this name, it's glycosylated hemoglobin, HbAc1. This is a shift base. And the ratios of this glycosylated hemoglobin can actually indicate if there is diabetes or not, because hemoglobin will bind glucose whatever the amount of glucose in blood is. So, whenever there is glucose, hemoglobin will bind it. So the ratio of such a compound to the shift base can indicate the presence of diabetes or not. So this is the second reaction, the condensation reaction. The third reaction is a mild oxidation. And oxidation equals the loss of hydrogen or the addition of oxygen. In this case here, it's a loss of hydrogens. And this reaction applies on amino acids that contain a sulfur group, a thiol group. Thiol is SH. So this applies on cysteine and methionine. For example, we have cysteine. Cysteine is like this. And if we add another molecule of cysteine, like this, And we apply this reaction, oxidation. What happens is these two hydrogens are actually lost, and 
a bridge is built between the two sulfur molecules, which is called a sulfur bridge. So, this mild oxidation reaction will form a sulfur bridge between these two amino acid molecules. So this is the third reaction, the mild oxidation, and it applies on amino acids with thiol groups. The fourth reaction is the reaction with phosphoric acid. And this one applies on amino acids with a hydroxyl group. So we have serine, we have threonine, and we have tyrosine. All of them can carry out this reaction. So again, we write the structure. And here we have the phosphoric acid. And what happens? is that we lose this H2O so we lose a water molecule and the phosphoric group will be added on this carbon so we will have the structure like this and to make it easier we can just write the group like this, a P in a circle. This is indicating that we're talking about a phosphorus group, phosphoric acid group, a phosphoric acid, phosphoric acid group to be more specific, a P in a circle. So these are uh, the reactions. The fifth reaction is a very important reaction, so I'm going to talk about it in the next video. And it's the reaction of condensation that happens between the amino acids themselves in order to form the peptide chains, which are the building blocks for proteins. So it's a very important reaction. That's why I'm going to talk about it in the next video. And until then, I thank you for watching and see you.